Hey guys, how you doing? Running Man here. Hey, uh, I want to say thank you very much because we had 500 subscribers uh, to the Running Man channel, which is totally, totally awesome. Just passed that today. Uh, thanks, Peter, for pointing it out. And uh, yeah, so let's take it to the next level. Today is a serious topic, talking about NGOs uh, with human trafficking. I don't know if you've been, a lot of guys haven't been to Asia, haven't traveled, so it's probably, this one's going to be a real eye-opener, because you know, if you're back, you know, wherever you are right now, you know feminism affects your life, and that there's so much bullshit, there's so many lies, there's so many exaggerations of harm done, and there's just endless, uh, you know, just, just, just endless bullshit, and uh, guys are just getting hammered in every single way. So this is a, this is a, I, I hesitated to do this one because the topic is serious. Obviously, the topic is serious, right? Human trafficking, uh, you know, is a serious topic, and uh, you know, slavery, you know, sex slavery, and all these things are a serious topic, and um, this is something that uh, nobody would condone, right? So uh, I don't want to. I want to talk about it though because the topic is it's 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 what is what's happening okay essentially what's happening is that human trafficking and sex slavery as an idea okay are being used to raise massive amounts of money uh, for NGOs and they're very 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 non-transparent and they're basically pulling a scam on Americans and Canadians that's essentially what's happening. So we're going to go into this article. The article is a great article uh, by Anne Elizabeth Moore, and you can see at the end, uh, you know, all of her accolades. She's she's written for everybody, you know, even like very left wing uh, sites like Salon, and 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 she's she's just really she's very decorated. She's awesome, and her her stuff is good. And so this is not some hack job here. Uh, this is not some fake news. This is a very serious article, but. What she's pointing out is that basically what's happening is that money, massive amount of money is being raised and it's being thrown into basically scams. So they're, they're, they're making up numbers, they're lies, they're caught in lies, they don't care, the money just keeps coming because everybody's so happy to stop uh, you know, human trafficking and slavery and women and the money just keeps coming. So when they keep raising money, the money just keeps coming. So regardless of what happens, what's uncovered, uh, the money keeps coming. So I wanted to do this article about that. So basically, she starts out with a, with an ask for a donation because sites like this, stories like this, are just not popular in mainstream media, right? So basically starts with the story of this lady, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Somali Ma'am. And she, it, she was a, in a nutshell, she was a supposed she was sex trafficked and she was a uh, you know she was a victim of sex trafficking by terrible male sex traffickers and uh, in Cambodia and so she was raising tons of money now she's re she has headed several NGOs uh, different names they change names off all the time she closes one she opens one but what happened was her she's now been recently ousted or this was this was a few years ago Newsweek did a cover story on her that basically blew her out of the water. So basically, she had a foundation called Somali Mem, and it was total bullshit, right? And so, you know, basically Newsweek broke the story, and she was kicked out of her own, uh, you know, foundation with her own name. Now, this was the biggest name in sex trafficking, okay? So imagine if, you know, you know what I mean? Like, we're talking about the Michael Jordan. We're talking about, you know what I mean, the LeBron James of this stuff. And she was basically completely lying. And what they found was, you can read the article, uh, but basically that nothing was true, as she said. You know, she was not trafficked. They interviewed her family. Nobody could verify. Nobody could even, it was just completely made up, right? And uh, she was raising tons of money in the West. So beware, I, this is the first thing I want to say, is beware NGOs who are taking money in the West to do things in Asia, because I found them to be almost all bullshit. And I mean, I mean, including like uh, even like the World Wildlife Fund. I've been to their, um, I've been to their orangutan um, habitat, whatever it's called in 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 um, Sumatra. And I've been to many, many. You know, just stumbled upon these NGOs, and I've had I've met many people. So, like for example, I have a friend who just flew over. She, she's a Christian. She flew over to Cambodia just like a month ago 
to work with anti-trafficking NGOs. So I have a kind of a, and also being over here, I meet people who are with NGOs all the time, whether they're from NGOs for stopping world hunger, when there's like basically no hunger, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's all these NGOs, they just raise a ton of money. They're very similar to religions. You know, you can just raise a ton of money and then you could buy yourself a jet. You know, there's nothing, nothing stopping you because the, once you've raised the money, the money, okay, NGOs would, the gig would be up with NGOs faster if they were in the U.S. So, for example, if I was raising money to go stop, you know, a female, let's say, sexual slavery in a city near me, uh, you know, the people that gave me the money would, you know, they would look at the news and be calling me, making sure, finding out what I was doing. And then let's say that I found out that there was no slavery, uh, but I made up some lies or whatever. People would quickly find out like, oh, that was so and so. She's not a slave. You know, she works at XYZ place and she chose to work there. And, you know, it would quickly come out. But the way these NGOs operate is they're never in the area that they're raising. They're, they're spending the money where they're raising the money. So it's a perfect scam because you raise the money in America, you know, in Canada, and then you go to you go to Cambodia, right, which is so far away for most people. For me, Cambodia is just next door, so I can go over there anytime. So I've been to Cambodia several times. I know the situation on the ground there from friends who've lived there for over 20 years, and it's just such a joke. You guys cannot even believe it. I'm, uh, let's just go through this article. There's, there's a lot more than this article, but this is good because... This is very reputable, uh, you know, article here. And so, let's see. So after this whole thing broke with Ma'am, then everybody started to dis the rats like sinking ship, right? Uh, even her longtime supporter Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times, uh, he bailed out. Uh, but what he said was, and this is the way it always is. This is these NGOs. They just they just never fucking give up. He said they, it was a worthy cause. And it was true enough. That's what he finally said, right? That's exactly what you have to think that what they're doing is they're raising money for one thing. Okay, so they're telling you when they're raising money from you or your wife or your friend, and they're saying we're going to stop sexual slavery. But actually what they're doing is when they get over to Cambodia, they don't find anybody who's a slave, right? They're just like working in a bar, girls that want to work in a bar, right? And then they say, hey, you know, uh, let's help you escape and then the girls will say well no i like it here because why do you like it here how could you like it here you know well because all my friends are here you know so they sometimes they'll take the girls it's so pathetic sometimes they'll take the girls and they'll give them a bunch of money uh, there's been several documentaries made where they gave girls money and then they the girls went back home for like a month and then they came back and then the, the documenter went to their hometown to find them and they were gone and then they were back in the bar and they said you know you told me that you just wanted money to get out of the business, but now here you are again. The girl's like, well, you know, all my friends are here. You know, I like doing this. <laughs> this is my job, right? And so it's like, it's so, it's so freaking pathetic. And again, I am not, and I really, please listen to me. I am not uh, a fan of the bars these girls work in. I mean, for me, it's like so boring and miserable. And, and it's usually freezing cold too, which... It's just retarded because it's so warm out here in Asia, you know. It's like you go in there and people are smoking and, you know, I don't drink so everybody's drinking. And then, you know, like, oh, geez, some of the so many of the women are just so ugly and so not into the guys. They're just it's just such pathetic to me. I, I just to me, it's all such a huge scam. Anyway, it's a scam of the guys spending the money is what it really is. And that's the sad stories is all the guys who go to these bars and then they spend their life savings on some girl and then they find out, of course, <laughs> she doesn't love them and she didn't give a shit the whole time, right? Uh, it's it's kind of like the West, but but more. <laughs> it's like worse, right? These these bar girls are just brutal. They are brutal. And also, when the guy runs out of money, a very common situation here in Thailand is that uh, the guy will, quote unquote, commit suicide, right? So he jumps out of a building and usually without his wallet. And they usually when her boyfriend or, you know, a bunch of Thai guys are in the room, Right. So it's just it's a never anything. And everybody knows it here in Bangkok. If you live here a long time, you'll just see this a million, million times. And the last thing is, is that they definitely are not slaves. I mean, these girls are working there. You know, they're happy to be working and they make big money, too. Many of these girls are making, you know, they're making huge money, actually, uh, especially by standards of Thailand. But I mean, even by standards of New York, 
the girls can make tons of money you know so but i'm not saying i'm not saying that uh these are good things i'm just saying that here when with these ngos it's such what this is this is the west trying to change the east okay so already in the west we have feminism which is fundamentally altered the way men and women act okay and now we have feminists who are not satisfied okay they're not satisfied with the fact that guys are getting fucked over in the west because there's all these girls in the east and there's more and more guys going with these girls and getting married so they're trying to stop that they're trying to shut that down they're trying to it's like a you know what I mean? Like you can all agree if, if all the agree the girls are feminist and uh, you know everything is rape and everything is and the, and the guy's on edge and he can't be you know relax and enjoy himself. You know what does he do? The guy does is he makes different choices, right? You know, and so then he goes somewhere else where it's more relaxed and where he can you know enjoy himself, right? So that's what happens. And so a lot of these these NGOs, what they're trying to do is they're trying to clamp down on some natural. Uh, culture that you have in Asia. In Japan, you see a lot of NGOs now, they're targeting uh, the sex industry. Um, you know, there was a recently an article uh, yesterday, I read it, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and it was like basically a woman complaining that there was a, uh, a fairly, uh, I don't know what she called it, it was, uh, she said it was basically nude, but I know Japan, there's no way it was nude. It was some kind of a pamphlet that said there was, you know, which, which porn movies were on at the hotel she was staying at and her 14 year old son was uh, also staying at the hotel now any 14 year old boy uh, loves porn right so he probably watches porn hub all the time right but either way she thought this was too much for her son he couldn't uh, deal with it so she was calling the hotel and then basically the japanese <laughs> manager at the hotel was kind of like well you know uh, you know what's what's wrong like what if she could the, the guy couldn't even understand what she was talking about he's like He's like, no, no, these girls are overage. They're not underage, you know. And she's like, well, you know, it's not right that uh, there's uh, pornography uh, in the hotel. And they, this basically, it was such a weak argument. She was basically saying that the menu for the porn should not be easily visible by the customers. Which, I mean, any 14-year-old boy, if there is pictures of porn and they're, they're available somewhere, the first guy who's going to find it is the guy, is the, is the boy, right? Not his mother. The boy is going to look, you know, all night to find it, right? <laughs> if he thinks it's interesting, he's going to go find it. And I know when I was 14, I would have been looking around everywhere for that thing, right? So either way, so what they're doing in Japan, and I can tell you this absolutely without a doubt, is they're trying to shut down Japanese sexual culture. It started off back with uh, MacArthur after the war ended. He went over there and they realized that the... The occupational forces realized that Japanese girls were having sex too easily. It was happening too easily. There was too much sex going on. So they started to clamp down on things. They, they, they separated men and women's bathrooms. And they separated the hot springs. They, they tried to do everything they could to stop um, natural Japanese sexual culture uh, from existing. Right, And so that, that they really did their best. And they actually did do a lot of damage and destroyed a very beautiful culture that Japan had, a very unique from thousands of years of isolation uh, culture, sexual culture, which was so interesting. I cannot, I mean, everybody that lived there back in the day, we were just blown away. It was, it was the most natural, sexual, all you hear about is the weirdness of Japan when you read the news. But I can tell you this from a guy who was living there back in the day, and it was all very, very natural. I mean, it was it was it was so natural, and that's why it was so sexy. It was so sexy because it was so human, right? And it wasn't like overdone. It wasn't like over, you know, like you tend to see in the West, dude, like the girls trying too hard when they're going to be sexual, right? Either they're not sexual and they're like clamping down on shit, or they're like too out in your face, right? Neither one is sexy, right? The Japanese natural culture for sex was very 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 sexy and it was a combination of cute and demure and shy and in and, and different outfits and clothing and uh, ways of acting and, and, and ways of walking and all this stuff it was just it was really beautiful and anybody who knows old Japanese culture was a huge part of it uh, men and women obviously relationships is a big part of culture right and this was a huge part of Japan but the NGOs they really in 1945 when the war ended 
they went to Japan and freaked out. They literally freaked out. I knew a guy who was a, a, a colonel down in Okinawa, and he told me a lot of stories. They were just blown away. I mean, like, the girls were having sex so easy, and it was like, what the hell, you know? This is going to ruin our boys, you know, because our boys are going to be, you know, they're going to be uh, whatever, you know, dirty, you know, like, oh, you know, whatever it is. You know, they were they were freaking out. And this was, this was basically the difference between um, non-religious country versus a religious country. Because Japan didn't have any traditional religion, they had, they had, of course, Shinto. Shinto, which was, Shinto is not. It's it's technically, if you look in the book, it's gonna they're gonna say it's a religion, but Shinto is really more like Japanese true Shinto. It's it's more like a series of uh, traditions than a religion. You know, it's like you don't go to it. There's no Sunday service. There's no there's no book to read. There's no. You know what I mean? It's just like you go there when certain periods in your life, like for example, you're trying to get into university and you would go and write something on a piece of wood and then hang it and give a little donation. Or, you know, different times when you want something, when you're worried about something, when you're thinking about something, there's different shrines in Japan that you go and kind of make an offering. And then, of course, when you get married or when you when you die, uh, these are the, the shrine was a big part of that. But it wasn't a religion as we think of a religion as far as morals, telling you how to live your life and that's why that's why that's how Japanese sexual culture was able to grow and 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 be such a part of it because there was nothing telling you you could do this or like the hole in the back anal is like really bad or you shouldn't do this before a certain age or you shouldn't do this when you're married there was no there was just none of that it was just like very natural like more like what feels good it was it was more like that Japanese natural uh, sexual culture and so naturally they freaked out and even today even today uh, women are going to Japan NGOs are going to Japan and they're really trying right now it's getting really hot right now I can do an interview with Japan if this is interesting for you guys but they're really trying to shut down the Japanese sexual culture now uh, they'll say something like oh all the girls are underage and then they'll check the girls ages and they won't be underage they'll be like they'll be wearing school uniforms in the videos but they're like 24 right and then they're like well, they look underage, you know, and that, and that is the truth. That is the fucking truth is I was talking to a girl one time and she was telling me uh, why she was saying like, well, there's, you know, all these underage women, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I said to her, I said, you know, uh, you know, because we were having a very nice conversation, actually. It wasn't like a, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, we were actually talking about it. And I said, I said, well, okay, so you think that everybody's underage here. And so there's this huge problem. I said, look, we were, at a, we were at a fabric market and there was a girl selling fabric. And I said, look, how old do you think that girl is? Right. And she said, she looked at her. And she said, I, she says, I don't know, like nine. And I said, she said, 11. I said, I don't know. You know, why don't you go ask her? Right. And we were in Vietnam at the time. And uh, she went and asked the girl and the girl said, I'm 27. And even I was shocked. I mean, she didn't look 27. She was like. She looks, she looked quite young, actually, even for me. I was like, whoa, 27? Holy moly. She had a kid and she was 27. Uh, but this was a girl that this Western girl who was new and was traveling around Asia thought was nine, right? So there's a lot of misunderstandings because Asian girls tend to look young. And so they, the, what, what happened in the end was, here's, here's what happened in the end of the discussion. She basically said, like, is like, they look so young that guys shouldn't, Western guys shouldn't be able to sleep with them because it's going to train them to want young girls, which is going to make them perverts, right? And I'm like, and like the girl who, who I actually went back and bought uh, some clothing from, I had some clothing made uh, from the girl, and I asked her what she thought about this the next day. I said, hey, what did you, you know, think about the whole discussion yesterday? And she said, she was like, she spoke English very well. She said, you know, I it was very um, insulting, she said, because a lot of Western girls, you know, don't give me the respect that I deserve because they think I look so young, like a kid. And they treat me like they're, they're like these policemen or something telling me how I should live my life. And I was like, whoa, really? And she's like, yeah, some guys too. She's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 27 years old. I mean, I'm a grown woman. I can decide what I want to fucking do, right? And th these Western women, th and, and she didn't say it, but I mean, the reason why they're doing this is because they're very insecure, they're losing the race of sexuality to these other women 
and they're trying to stop it in any way they can. So they're saying that it's trafficking. They're saying that it's sexual slavery. They're saying that it's underage. But when it proves not to be, they don't even care. They just say basically, just like this guy said, uh, Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times said, it's true enough, basically. That's what they're basically saying. Like, even if everything we're saying is a lie, it's true enough. It should still be important, right? It's total, it's absolute total bullshit. And I don't mean that in the sense that if there is true trafficking going on and if people were being kidnapped, I personally really am not, I, 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 would, be, I would be willing to volunteer to go and, and investigate and fuck them up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not into that. I'm not into any kind of violence. I'm not into any kind of like holding people. I think the way that you win in this life is by being attractive and by kicking ass and drawing people to you like a magnet. And that's what I spend my time doing. My energy is improving myself so that, you know, an, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm attractive to the out, from the outside, right? So I, I win, right? It's not about forcing people. That's the exact opposite of, one, it's not sexy. Two, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Three, it's illegal in many cases. But even some people force legally by, you know, pressure and things like that. That's just all bullshit. It's all bullshit. You guys, it's, it's like you should never be thinking that. You want to always be thinking like how to be so attractive that girls are naturally attracted to you, right? Whether you want to have sex or not. I mean, your MGTOW, you don't want to have sex. Hey, you still want to have good self-esteem. You still want to have self-confidence, right? It's fucking important for a guy, right? And you also want to keep, uh, you know, ejaculating because if you don't ejaculate, you get, you get um, cancer much higher, right? You have to be healthy. You have to clean the pipes. You have to keep your body working. Use it or lose it, right? It's a very true. Okay, so let's go down here. So so basically this was true. So basically, oh yeah. So ma'am, the girl I talked about before, she claimed that most of the girls were from trafficking. Well, an independent audit of the NGO in 2014, January, said 49% can be considered traffic under any definition of the term. Okay, now this was, a, this was an audit, right, in Cambodia. This is a pain in the ass to do, right? These kind of things don't happen often. So when they do happen, you have to pay attention because a lot of this kind of thing, when there's a money machine like an NGO just sucking in cash, and you're going to see later in the article how much money they actually get. It's tons of money, serious money. People get killed for this kind of money, right? Uh, but basically what they found, so you have to take any kind of real research seriously because it is so rare. They found many were consensual adult sex workers, right? That's what I always find. That's what you always find when you go to any bar. Nobody's chained up, you know, they're actually deciding to work there for whatever reason. Usually they have a good reason. And I'll tell you something, the other thing is in Cambodia and in Vietnam and in Thailand, most of the time when somebody is working in the sex industry, they generally have one, two, three children that they're supporting. And that's why they work. That's why they want to make more money because they're looking for a way out of their daughters doing the same business, right? That's generally what they're doing. That's, that's, usually, that's usually what they're doing. They're usually not bad people. Uh, they're usually not so well educated. You know, these girls didn't go to Harvard. You know, they generally don't have that many options. But one of the options is to make a ton of money at bars. So that's what they do. And then they try to get their kids a better life, right? And uh, so that's a pretty common uh, thing. So let's go in here. Let's go back with this ma'am lady. So basically, yeah, it's just more and more stuff. She's proven false. Lies are, yeah. So anti-traffic organizations, when you hear that, Okay, when you hear they're raising money, like let's say you're standing in front of Walmart, you know, take down their name and, and do some research online because these organizations are so bullshit and they're based on lies. They're usually somebody like Ma'am who's restarted her, you know, you know, fundraising from another source. Basically, they're scumbags. Okay, here's how the whole thing works. Okay, you have some scumbags in the third world who will do anything to make money. Okay, they're looking to make a ton of money. And then you have feminists who will use these groups, okay, as a way for their own political power. Okay, and sometimes money also, because they'll get a salary or they'll get travel to Cambodia, right? Which is not bad, right? Go to Cambodia, cruise around, right? It's, 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 it's a pretty good, uh, for most people, international travel is interesting and fun, right? So these feminists, it's, it's, it's like a two thing. So the feminists don't really care if it's true or not. And they look the other way when they know 
but this is headed by ma'am who's been she's been totally totally debunked even by newsweek a mainstream news media in the west that is very very pro-feminist you know it's just like she's completely full of shit okay and then even then the women she'll start a new a new ngo and then the feminists are like whatever it's true enough so they'll come up with all these facts they'll they'll basically allow the the, the ngo to make up a bunch of stuff the feminists will use it as a way to raise money right and to gain power and a way to change the east that's the ultimate goal it's to limit the amount of sex the guys are having and to change the you know like i said in the beginning there's too many guys getting too much sex too easy and the girls are too young and too hot looking and that is very upsetting the apple cart especially if you're 400 pounds and look like shit right that's a pretty big uh you know not not a very good thing for you right so we got these enemies we got these the common mythical enemy there's these nameless and faceless men in tv dramas and they trade in this young girl stock and there's all these movies about it and it, it looks great on movies you can have the guys you know with that black shaded out you know and like ooh, the bad guy you know and he's trading all these women right and uh, you know ma'am and all these groups always have these kind of tv commercials right of course it's all made up it's just like yeah, it's just it's just you know completely BS, but it it looks good on camera, right? Looks great on camera, right? Uh, so let's go. Here we go. Blah blah blah. I don't want to go too much on this, but basically you can read the whole article below. Uh, let's go down here. Yeah, it's 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 just what they're doing here in this article is basically um, debunking the whole thing uh, that uh, United Nations and NGOs are uh, doing and they're basically just scamming and there's there's also another scam that's quite popular and there was a documentary i saw if i can find it i'll put it on below it's it's ngos about uh homeless children so what they're doing is they're basically either renting kids or uh you know rounding up kids at night and putting them in these these uh, uh what do they call it uh, i can't even think of it now but basically there's all these like supposedly kids without parents and then the westerners come and they stay for two weeks and then they, they play games with the kids and they give them presents. And, and it's like the, the, the documentary was, it was so sad, but it was hilarious at the same time. Uh, because it, some of the kids that grew up in these camps, like they, they would go to these camps and then all the Westerners come over to do good. And they come over for two weeks and then they go home, right? And the kids basically have parents and they just come over and pretend like they don't have parents. And then more money is raised and the groups in the states the ngos in states they love it because it looks great on camera and nobody does any real research so when they find out the kids actually have a home nobody really cares it's a money machine it just keeps on going and it what keeps it going is the internationalness of it is that's what keeps you in the dark is because they're raising money where you are and they're spending money in cambodia it's perfect it's a perfect scam so ngos for kids without parents that's another one and then also the sex slavery one is always a good one. You can raise a lot of money. If you want to start an NGO, you may as well, you know, start an NGO, raise a few million dollars, and then just go come over here and spend the money, uh, you know, on whatever you want, right? Swimming pools or whatever, you know, because that's what these women are doing. And no one's stopping them. No one is stopping them. But leading here, here's a good quote. But leading a moral crusade is definitely lucrative, right? So how much money? Okay, so 50 of the prominent anti-trafficking organizations in the United States share $686 million. Now that would rank as the 184 biggest GDP of a country above Samoa, which is a beautiful country, by the way. And that's just uh, a, a, a very low estimate, right? So this is just how much money we're just saying, okay, maybe they have about this. But we can see how much they raise is a lot more. It's a lot more. So let's go through the stats here. Uh, da, 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 da. They don't have to file tax returns. Right, so these groups are so basically transparent. They change names all the time. One opens, one closes. A woman gets caught, you know, like lying, and then they change the name, and she changes her name. And there's a new one pop up, and meanwhile, the dummies over back where you guys are, they just reach in their wallet, they're like, "Oh, women, sexual slavery." Well, sure, I want to stop sexual slavery, right? And like I said, you know, I mean, everybody wants to stop sexual slavery. Nobody wants that, right? The problem is these groups are just fleecing people of money. Well, they think they're doing good, and they're just giving money to total scumbags. At the same time, the, the, a lot of the money is used to change Asia, and it's putting pressure on 
sex workers because that's their ultimate goal. They do not want women giving away sex for $50 or whatever they do, right? They don't like that. They don't like Western guys coming over here and having sex, even if it's totally legal, even if the, you know what I mean, it's above board. They don't like that. So they call it, you know, something criminal. It turns out not to be. It turns out to be just some transaction between two adults. They don't like that. <laughs> That's not good, right? Uh, they, they, they say it's underage. It turns out to be underage. It doesn't matter. It's true enough, right? It's just bad enough, right? It's like, should not happen. A lot of these groups are Christian. So if you're Christian, you should really seriously look into this stuff because Christians are giving good money, trying to help save the world, to total scumbag organizations. And the documentary I saw, the guys who were actually running the um, the homes for kids that were fake, oh man, they were fucking evil, man. These guys were bad news, you know. You would not want to, basically if you tried to uncover this thing and they caught you, murder, you know. There's so much money in this. Like that's in these third world countries. If you, if you, if there's a fraud and you uncover it, it's not like in America. They will fucking take you out, right? It's a really common thing. Anybody who's in, who who uncovers anything in the West, you're fine. In in Asia, you get you jump off a building, right? It's it's very very common, right? So basically, these these let's go in here like all just the bullshit never ends. They don't file taxes. They're supposed to file taxes. Half the Sky Movement is the one we're talking about here. Uh, they took in $2.2 million in one year, not including book sales, screening revenues, and appearance fees. Uh, Christoph and co-author, Nicola, Nic- Nicola Christoph of the, of the um, New York Times and Cheryl Wudung took in during the subsequent years. So there's low estimates. There's more money, more money, more money. 19 disclosed uh, anti-trafficking organizations, a million dollars or more. Okay, annual budgets, that's how much they spend, right? Not how much they take in, they take in more. And again, it's transparent. It's not even transparent. So they're basically, it's kind of like asking a drug dealer how much do you make, right? He tells you something, you know, it's it's way on the downside, right? Because they don't have to present anything. These they, they, they operate above the law, essentially. They're just like total scumbag organization, raising tons of money from good people, trying to help the world. And then they're just spending it on any kind of bullshit, right? It's basically what's happening, right? So here we go, here we go. It's more bullshit, more bullshit. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah, here we go. Break down the numbers here. This is good. $686 million we talked about before. Breaks down to $13.7 per group per year, okay? Uh, now, that money could be used for a lot of good things, but it's 13.7 per group per year. Think about that. And there's 50, right, in the States alone, right? Okay, now, uh, and da, 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 also federal funds. The U.S., this is just the U.S., this is not even Canada, spends $1.2 to $1.5 billion, throws it in there. These groups get a lot of that money also, right? Uh, da, 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 so we're talking about Somali Man again. She's got some new one. It's, it's basically taking money away from Americans that have been fucked over by the recession, right? And they're taking their hard-earned money, and they're just basically throwing it away, giving it to the bad guys, right? Let's go in here. Oh, yeah. And it, okay, it's all based on these fake headlines, right? How many traffickers? Uncountable. How many victims? So many. How young are they? How old are they? Too young. How much money changes hands? Gazillion upon gajillions of dollars daily. Scarily lucrative. Time declared. That They're the one that uncovered this, right? It's just it's just unbelievable money machine. Uh, sexual slavery. Ooh, what a great topic. Whenever there's a topic like this, you're going to have some scumbags. But when the topic is is sexual slavery, it makes it really hard for people to tell the truth because nobody wants to be seen to be against groups that are against sexual slavery, right? That's why I hesitated to make this video. Um, you know, and they talk again. They say they're 13 years old. They're not 13 years old. Let's see here. No, 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 no. Okay, Nelly Quota, da, 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 Pimps. Okay, yeah, basically, I'll let you go and I'll let you go ahead and read this if you want to read this. It just goes on and on and on and on. Uh, there's no evidence that human trafficking is growing. In fact, it's shrinking, but they're saying it's growing. And then, you know, there's all these numbers. And, you know, I mean, you just have to think about it just logically. I mean, if somebody's dancing in a bar, right, like there's no chain on them, right? How, you know what I mean? And they go out and go home at night. And they go out with cust- It just doesn't make any sense. It's just like 
the whole thing is just totally like, what? You know, it's like if I told you today, like IBM employees are all trafficked, you know, they're all slaves. They don't look like it. They look like they're free, right? They're, they're walking around and driving away in their car, going to work, come back tomorrow. But they are under enormous pressure and they, uh, yeah, oh man, it's bad. Ooh, IBM. Ooh, better watch out for that. Ooh, man. There's a lot of people who are give us a lot of money so we can go and um, free those workers, eh? Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're in some serious trouble, right? Oh, yeah. It breaks down the $686 million a year breaks down to 340,000 343 thousand dollars per case now the case again is totally exaggerated right but even then at the exaggerated numbers it's still three hundred forty three thousand dollars per case okay you can buy a nice apartment here in bangkok for two hundred thousand dollars think about how much money that is cambodia you could probably buy 10 apartments right okay and yet they only had six they ask them how many beds they have in 82 they are 2013 they only had 682 beds so they're getting $343,000 per person, right? And it's just like, they don't even have beds, right? It's just bullshit. There's no one in the beds, right? That's why they don't have beds, right? Okay, so here we go, here we go. So don't give money to these groups and don't give in. The, the, the end result of these NGOs, these sexual slavery groups, is to change the balance of power. It's to take feminism worldwide. It's to change the way Asians have sex. It's to change the, the, mo the model to make it not as attractive, to, to kind of clamp down. They've been doing it to Asia since 1945 when the, when the U.S. first came over here. Um, and they, they just continue. So this is just another, it's another episode. Uh, now they're going to Cambodia. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else? I'm getting towards the article in the article. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, the mythology of sex trafficking in the United States. Yeah, so here's here's her, uh, the uh, Anne Elizabeth Moore, the author. She is a, um, she wrote for, uh, let's see here, she wrote a couple of books. She's a Fulbright Scholar, USC, Gettysburg Arts Journalism Fellow. Uh, she worked for Al Jazeera, Salon. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. MCA Chicago, CNN, NPR, Voice of America, New York Times. And she has a new book, uh, which came out a couple years ago because this article uh, is a few years old. So the numbers that you're reading there are lower than the latest numbers because this is a growing thing. Uh, raising money for NGOs uh, for supposed sexual slavery is a huge thing. So uh, to end this one, I don't want to say that uh, that there is no buddy ever that has ever been forced into sexual slavery. But I just say that, you know, being over here, in supposedly the hotbed of this stuff, is that I, I personally have never met anybody. And I, I, I meet a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people. And um, I'm a very, I'm the type of person that people tell a lot of their secrets to. I mean, it's just been one of my things ever since I was a kid. People come up to me and say, oh, you know, this, you know, our family, you know, I'm actually, uh, you know, my dad is actually somebody else. <laughs> They'll tell me some secret. I'm like, why did you tell me that? I don't want to know that. You know, but they're like, I don't know. They feel comfortable saying so. I mean, I'm the kind of person that definitely people talk to, people tell. I've been over here for, like I said, 28 years. I've been in Asia, and I've never ever met somebody who's trafficked. Uh, you know, so if it, and I and I've and I've been all over the place, like all over Asia. Like I've been literally like, just I came over here. As a, as, a, as a university student, I just went all over the place, like literally walking and, you know, just taking buses and across Asia, a very rough uh, road. Uh, and then now uh, traveling uh, all over the place and living all over the place. I've lived in North Asia, South Asia, all over the place. And uh, I just have never met anybody who's trafficked yet. And I've never heard of anybody in my own personal sphere that's trafficked. And I'm always downtown. I'm always at the places where, you know, this kind of stuff would happen, right? Like, uh, you know, you know, like you think of, you know, the red light district or whatever of New York, you know, I mean, I'm always, you know, that's where I live in Bangkok, where there's a huge three red light districts, there's one within a few hundred meters of my house, and there's two more nearby, um, you know, not far, you know, like a 25 minute walk, right? So I'm here and I'm, I'm, you know, so I don't see it. I'm not hearing it. 
I'm not saying that there's, it's not possible that there is somebody and that they shouldn't be helped. I mean, of course, that that would be ridiculous. But uh, let's get this stuff down. Don't uh, blow up these fucking NGOs that are just scamming people. Uh, it's the same thing, like I said, with the uh, the uh, the kids without parents. It's a great topic. It's something that everybody loves to give money. Everybody wants to feel good about themselves, right? So they're they're like they're out there doing what they can to to feel good, right? So you know, a lot of Westerners they just want an easy way to feel good. You know, give them an easy way. An easy way is to give a little money to an NGO, which is doing something that's you know stopping a very terrible person. So it's kind of the perfect kind of storm for raising money and it just as you can see the numbers are huge and they're just raising raising more and more money but what you're not saying is you're not saying people being found and people being released right what you're seeing is even the leaders of these organizations the freaking leaders are being totally unmasked and we're not talking by a very like a like some kind of uh mra group we're talking about newsweek right so I hope that's been like kind of a wake up call. Don't, you know, don't when you when you travel, you know, spend your time enjoying your life. If you come across something serious, I mean, by all means, help the person out. But watch out because in the one of the first things you'll encounter is scammers when you travel in third world. Somebody wants to part you to part with your money, whether it's you know a bunch of kids like playing a game around you and you're getting pickpocketed, or you know there's some sad story of the girls sick water buffalo um you know and you know the brother's in prison again and he needs money you know there's there's endless stories that you'll be uh, people will approach you and try to get your money and if you live here you know you realize that the people are just doing what they do and you have to it's your job to kind of know what's true what's not true you know the sick water buffalo thing is not it's not true water buffaloes are fucking very tough they cruise around uh, they can like carry you know they can move logs and shit you know they they don't, they're not like these like weak creatures that always be in the hospital. You don't see them in the hospital a lot, right? So, um, you know, they're actually very, very tough creatures, right? Uh, it's kind of like an alligator in the fucking, you know, vet every day, right? It's like the alligator. <laughs> How many alligators, you know, they, they look fine. <laughs> they're, they're fine. So it's your job as a Westerner. It's your job as a traveler. It's your job as wherever you're from. And I know a lot of people are listening from everywhere, from China, from all over the world, India, people listening to this podcast, you know, so wherever you're from, it's your job to know what's going on. It's your job not to get scammed, you know. Don't give money to the bad people. If you want to do something in life, like take your balls, take them out of the fucking, you know, take them out of your shorts, put them on the table, and go do something that is seriously risky. You know, and I tell you this, when I was in China, I often saw children that were being that were kidnapped and they were begging for money and I did not I did not let that go easily and I had a lot of run-ins with them and I, I, I even had situations where I took the kids to the police uh, and said you know this kid I believe is kidnapped and is not this and then they said yeah well that's not his mother you know and they would make a big deal out of there embarrassed that a foreigner would bring this to your attention you know I mean I'm one that will jump into a situation and risk my life even if I feel that it's super important you know, I don't like this kind of stuff. I don't like to see these things. You know, I don't like to see animal cruelty. I don't like to see, uh, you know, especially when I see children begging and they don't, they're, they're, they're not, you know, it's not their mother. It's like th they're, they're trafficked. You know, there, there actually is traffic in Asia. And then there's a, there is a um, very, very specific centuries old, even, maybe even thousands of years old system for uh, kidnapping kids in China to make them beg. And it consists of leaving the kids on five different street corners so that finally at the final street corner, uh, nobody knows where they eventually came from. And they are basically sentenced to a life of begging, right? So I know that the begging thing is real in China. And then when you see somebody begging, a kid begging, is the last thing you should do is give money to them because what you're actually doing is giving money to the evil person that is running the whole operation. Um, and a friend of mine uh, made a movie about this um, and it was great, and uh, you should I, you should watch it. I'll put the uh, I'll see if I can find it and put it in the um, in the box below. So it's okay to 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 want to change things. It's okay to be upset by things. It's okay to actually you know take a chance, right? Don't just give money just to the easy way. Fucking get out there and do it, right? Get out there and fucking take a chance, take a risk, you know. That's okay, but 
avoid these scummy organizations that are using, especially in this case, feminism is, 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 is partnering with groups that they know are dishonest as a way to raise money, as a way to change sexual attitudes and sexual behavior for their benefit. And they could care less if you prove them wrong. They could give a fuck. They don't care. They're just going to continue on. It's true enough is the basic, the best you can get out of them. That's from a New York Times journalist. True enough. Can you imagine true enough? It's true. It's been proven false, but it's true enough. That's how I want to end this. So thank you very much for uh, for uh, listening and subscribing because it's 500. It's fucking awesome. Hope you guys have a good day. I'm going to go meet a friend of mine who's uh, visiting Bangkok. <laughs>